I'll call the meeting to order for the District of Chetwin, and uh, we will read our opening statement. opening statement. As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens, and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalf. Thank you. Okay, adoption of, uh, of the agenda, if, uh, we uh, have a few changes in our agenda. And one of the ag agenda changes will be our delegation. Enbridge uh, will not be uh, here today. Uh, in that uh, position, we are gonna be having, uh, what is, is it? President of Kanuma Cole will uh, be presenting today. I would make that motion with those changes. Second. 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 Okay. Favorite carried. And if there's any new business or anything to be added to our agenda right now, counselors? Nothing. Okay. So minutes of uh, the meeting. Motion to receive. Second. Uh, March 14th, all those in favor? Carried. Okay, uh, we will move directly on to our delegation. Yep. Oh, there we go. State your name and position. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, sir. Um, we would like to, we think last year we came over and did kind of an annual review, so we wanted to take the opportunity to do the same, um, to kind of give everybody that be kind of an open forum, and I'll take some questions after if anybody has any questions, just to kind of give a review on where Kanuma is at. Um, if you remember, we actually purchased this out of bankruptcy in September of, of uh, 2016. And uh, one of the initial deals and um, parts of the purchase was that we would hire 200 people um, initially. And we did that. Actually, we hired 300 in the first three months. And we're real proud to kind of talk a little bit about that relationship, not only how the company has grown, but I very much um, would like to uh, uh, appreciate the council um, for the work that we've been able to do here and with Tumblr. To me, we've done this as a consolidated project together on how we could be a blessing to the community, but by involving everyone in this. So uh, whether we talk about the council work or we talk about working with the schools or Kanuma's attitude toward higher and local, I think it all pays into a pretty neat story. So just to kind of give you a 20,000 foot level, um, a view of, of the growth, um, in 2017, we actually produced 3.2 million tons worth of metallurgical coal. Um, and then last year in 18, we did 4.6 million tons worth of metallurgical coal. And this year, we're on pace to do 5.8 million tons worth of metallurgical coal. Um, to kind of give you a feel from numbers standpoint, obviously, when we started two and a half years ago, we had one employee. I was the sacrificial lamb to see whether this thing was going to work. And as we put together the business plan, um, now, right now, we're sitting at 870 families. And so we're real proud of that. And it's not only those amount of direct jobs, but the indirect job, indirect job calculation then puts us around 5,000 total families to the area. So we're, we're real pleased at that. We know there's a big responsibility with that, um, not only from an environmental standpoint to make sure that we are net positively moving ahead, that we can kind of work on some areas that, that uh, traditionally mining maybe didn't do the best job they could have. Um, so we feel like we've made a lot of progress in that as far as water quality, reclamation, and um, I'm going to tie into the, the uh, responsibility side what we have back to the communities. You know, what we've tried to be a leader in working with the schools and, and working with, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, our two communities. I'll say three now because we, we have a number of employees coming in from McKenzie also. Um, but we also feel like we have a responsibility to work with our vendors and our four First Nations partners. So we think it's, it's been, Kanuma was started under the concept to be a general um, blessing to the community and I'm real proud of what we got a chance to put together over the last two and a half years. Um, 
with that, and, and I would, I'll have John come up and introduce himself here in just a minute, but um, I'll be leaving with some other assignments, um, the area, and, um, and going heading back to the states here shortly. But in, that, in doing that, it was very, very important to me to be able to share that and to have my position filled with, with a professional that was very strong in their values as I'd like to believe that Kanuma started and, and we feel very strongly in. And again, I'll let John come up in just a minute and introduce himself and kind of tell you a little bit about his background. But staying straight, straight kind of on company numbers right now, um, right now we're sitting at 870 employees. Um, the goal is to be at 950. Um, so we still have another 80 employees to pick up over the next two months. Um, that'll take us up to kind of a full run status. Um, from a, a sales standpoint, um, we're very strong. We're in very good shape um, from where we're at from a company. Um, all of our coal goes export coal. It's all to the metallurgical coal market. And you know, because it's metallurgical coal, for every ton of steel, you need three quarters of a ton of metallurgical coal. So for all the people out there that says that we can just get rid of metallurgical coal, yeah, then they need to reduce their diet for steel. Con international consumption last year in the steel market was up 4.8 percent um, for the year and most of the analysts feel like it's going to grow at another 4 percent a year over the next 10 to 20 years. So just by looking at those raw numbers, the steel consumption, thus metallurgical coal consumption, is going to increase by about 50 percent over the next 10 years. And for a mining industry which has been very reluctant to invest money in long-term projects, if you look at the math behind that, it is a metallurgical coal property that has really good quality, which we do on all three of our sites, um, we think has a very, very strong future. So our goal to you, and I think comments that I made to the council last year and the year before, was we want to build a company that is traditionally responsible to the point that we have a successful secure, regardless of what the commodity market is doing. And I feel like we've, done, we've taken a very strong stance at keeping our cost and our debt low um, to be able to be a long-term provider for our families and for our communities. And that's been a stance and a position that we've ran from the very beginning. And so we're very, very honored to be able to say we've continued a growth pattern with our employees from a safety standpoint. Um, last year, we, ran, we won the Edward Pryor Award, which was the, the, the safest uh, mine in British Columbia in our job class. Uh, we won that with the, uh, the Burl, Burl mine, and this year we just had the ceremonies last week for 2018, and we won it again. And we won it for the Wolverine up mine, with the Burl mine being second place. When we look at the safety numbers overall of the company over the last two and a half years, our overall safety rate right now is a .3, which is one-fifth of the industry average in North America. So right now we are considered to be the, the safest mining operation in Canada and by some numbers, maybe even the world. So we're real proud of that as a young company to be able to grow not only in security for our families, also for our communities. Environmentally, we're doing some very creative things. But at the end of the day, we're also getting our people home safely. So we're real proud of the team that we've been able to put together. I think Kanuma is very much an example of a company that has grown to be a blessing to the community and, and to walk the talk that, that we have. So, and I compliment not only the council here, the past council and mayor, and also the communities around, because I think Kanum is, is an example of what collaboration can be. Uh, we've worked very well together. We've had some challenges. There's been some things that the community has brought out that they felt like that we should do better. I've gotten calls from councilmen or in council women at night um, suggesting some things, and I'd like to think we've responded very well to those and respectfully, and, and, and we've imp helped improve everything. So, so, Mayor, I, I just want to say thank you to, to the group in front of us and to Chetwin um, from Kanuma and our employees and our investors that I think it's been just a really, really good relationship. Um, and I'd like to think that we've paid back through the schools and through, from a tax base. And we also get a chance every month to write you guys a check. Um, and that's also, and I don't look at that as a negative. That's our investment in, in, in Chetwin. So very much how we look at that. So with that, I'll let John share, and then we'll be open for some questions. One moment, Mark, before you leave. Okay. Um, just on behalf of Mayor and Council, um, we would really like to thank you and Kanuma Cole for what you've done to all of our communities. Your commitment is outstanding, and we appreciate everything that you've done for us. Thank you very much. And God bless you, Mark. Thank you, sir. I very much appreciate that. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Mayor and Council, for 
the opportunity to introduce myself. Um, <clears throat> I've worked in over the past 30 years in Western metallurgical and thermal coal properties, and coal has been a part of my whole life uh, through my career. Um, and and what I can say is I'm a I'm a mining engineer by background as well, and I've progressed all the way through from a junior engineer all the way up to where I am today. Mark and I worked together on the board for the Coal Association of Canada, and that's where I first got to know Mark. And any time Mark had an opportunity to speak, he always spoke with great passion around the Kanuma Coal, around the, the strong partnerships that Kanuma has developed with regulators, with municipalities, communities, um, suppliers, um, our employees, First Nations groups, and, and strong relationships and partnerships that have been built with based on integrity and a loss prevention uh, model. And that came through very clear and before I even thought about coming to join Kanuma. And when I received a call to see if I'd be interested to come up here, I met with the CEO, I met with some board members, and the message that was the same that resonated with them that Mark communicated with some great passion. So it was a, a no-brainer for me to quickly accept this position. I, I just want to say that I look forward to building and growing the relationship and my wife Louise and I growing our, our uh, time and uh, going to be living in Tumblr Ridge, but at the same time building on the solid foundation that Mark has built for the company. And uh, I give you my commitment that we'll continue with working on the great relationship that he's built already. So thank you for your time. Thank you, John. You get uh, some big boots to fill, and I'm sure you uh, will do a great job. Thank you. Any questions? Um, of, the, of the 80 employees that you're going to be looking for, um, are, are they special trades people that you need, or is what type of um, We've got, credential? Of that 80, there's about 30 that are trades. Um, there's also about 50 that are more in the operating class. Uh, and let me actually, actually say probably 40 in the operating class and more 10, 10 probably more from the administrative side oh. and technical side. So we would encourage, I mean, we have... We have gotten, right now, we probably have gotten 10,000 applications active, um, a lot of them from outside the area. And as I have shared before, we, we will always internally put a, um, a preference on local. So if, if there has been people that have put applications in before, it's not an excuse, but we do have so many in the file, we'd encourage people to re-put it, you know, to, to re-put one in to be looked at. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Yes, yeah, we've, uh, we lost your gift. We, we, we want to present, present you with something, uh, okay. Mark, prior to your uh, going, okay. because you've been very good to uh, the citizens of Chetwin, Tumbler Ridge, and now Mackenzie. So the, the hands you reach with are big, so thank you very much. And I'm sure John will do the same, because it uh, <clears throat> sounds like your company is going in the right direction on uh, how to uh, manage uh, companies and uh, introduce yourselves to all the communities that's involved in your, uh, in your reach. So, Laura, please. Just giving us a little time to breathe. Thanks, Mark. And you too, John. I'm just going to ask one question of uh, staff. Uh, did uh, Enbridge make a decision when they're going to be here? I heard uh, April 1st. That's no joke, right? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll uh, be looking forward to uh, Enbridge's uh, uh,
presentation on April 1st. Okay, we will uh, carry on with our uh, meeting. Uh, okay, bylaws. The District of Chelton Water Fees Charges Regulation Amendment Bylaw Number 1092 and 2019 requires first, second, third reading. Motion to move first, second, and third reading. I'll second that. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, we'll back up here a little bit. We got, I got one question yep. on the bylaw. Yeah, on the um, non-metered users rates, um, they're um, per single family dwelling. It's uh, 325 for duplex dwelling per unit. It's 325. And then multifamily apartments, it's 216. Um, I'm just curious why the, the huge difference is there that much less consumption at the uh, multifamilies? Or? I'm having a bit of a hard time recalling some of the science that was put into that at the time. It was done quite a few years ago now. Uh, but I believe, yes, there was a fair bit less uh, consumption on those properties at, at that time anyway so we haven't looked at it since we have very few single-family residences that are not metered so it, the majority of it is captured through the meter readings and is there any um, multifamilies that aren't metered don't believe so at this point okay, okay. thank you All the question. All those in favor? Carried. Okay. B3, District of Chetland Solid Waste. <clears throat> oh, okay, we're okay, we'll uh, we'll get to B2 the first, I guess, before B3. <laughs> District of Chetwin Sewer Fees and Charge Amendment Bylaws Number uh, 1093 2019 require first, second, and third readings. I'll move first, second, and third reading. Second. Favor? Okay, carry. Okay, B3, District of Chetwin Solid Waste, Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Services Amended. Amendment bylaw number 1094 2019 require first, second, third reading. Motion to move first, second, and third reading. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Committee reports. Do we have one? I sent you a report. Uh, you didn't get it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do a PRRD meeting. I, uh, I was in a meeting with the PRD, and uh, right now, what our uh, biggest, uh, uh, let's say, issue and uh, what's going on right now is with the recovery of the uh, recovery plan for the mountain caribou. So uh, the province has contacted our, uh, our uh, chairman of the Peace River Regional District. And they were, they're going to have a meeting on the 20th of this month. And uh, it, it will be uh, uh, getting information on the terms of uh, reference on our, uh, what's inside our agreement or their agreement with, with uh, First Nations. So right now, we, we are in a holding pattern, finding out uh, what more will come out of that meeting on the 20th. So uh, right after the meeting, our chair is going to uh, put something out so that we all will have a, an idea of what they're going to present to us, or they might present something to us at that time. So, but they've only asked for uh, our chairman, and our chairman says, no, we need our, our person that's been looking after our caribou for the Peace River Regional District 
Dan Rose, he's the vice uh, chairman, so he will be in that meeting. So we have expert there, and uh, he is an expert, and that's who uh, Chetwin has been relying on uh, deeply with this uh, caribou recovery plan. And uh, is there any questions that you want council that need, need me to answer for the just on that meeting alone? Uh, so anyway, we'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it out once I get the information to everybody. When I say everybody, I mean Chatwin, Tumbler Ridge, Dawson Creek, everything. The PRD will put it out, and so will we when we get the information. And uh, on the mayor, mayor's report, uh, I only had the uh, talking about the... Uh, I don't have it in front of me, so I'm going to have to throw this one out there. And uh, the mayor's report was that this spring uh, it, it has been very involved, and I've met with uh, quite a few uh, organizations in the last uh, uh, four months, and it's been quite uh, entertaining, to say the least. And uh, one of the things that comes out of it is that uh, the Everywhere I went, it was the same issue that we talked about, and, and it's been the caribou, and I just uh, released something from the PRRD about the caribou. Until this issue is resolved or comes to a point where we at least we have information, this will be the topic of uh, our conversation until we have something uh, on the 20th will give us a little bit lighter uh, thing. And on the other hand, on the, on the other part about our district, it's uh, spring, so... Uh, we have our issues with the water. So if there's anybody out there that has issues with the water melting, and uh, we've got our uh, vac truck, I believe, do we have a steam truck, Alex? Yeah, so we're, we're trying to get the culverts and all that, and uh, right now, with, uh, with it being wet, I ask all the citizens that, could you guys please count the potholes for us so we could at least try to get to them? in a timely manner because we need to wait till it's kind of dry before we could get to them. Uh, with that, I, do, I believe that uh, that's all I have for now. Okay, discussion items. Email from Prince George, dated March 12th. Invitation to BC uh, Mayor's Caucus, March uh, 31st to April 2nd, 2019 in Prince George. Make that recommendation that council authorize the mayor to attend the BC Mayor's Caucus in Prince George on March 31st to April the 2nd. I would second that. Favor? Okay, carry it. Letter from the Royal Canadian Legion dated March 1st, 2019. Make, Letter of support. I'll make that recommendation. Council authorize the administration to provide the Royal Canadian Legion branch number 258 with a letter of s stating that council has no objections to the liquor license being changed from a primary club to a primary LC. I would second that. I got a question. When we do this, uh, are we, because uh, I know in the letter it states that uh, they don't have to sign in to, to the lounge, right? Prior to this, Correct. they had to? Correct. Okay. So this is Just, why we received the letters, because she asked me if I would write her a letter of support. Okay. So I, that's exactly yep. what they're looking for, so you don't have to sign in, so they can get new members. Okay. Just information. Thanks. Right. Okay, all those in favor? Sending a support letter? Okay, thank you. Gary? Correspondence. Correspondence. Three, one, three. Okay. Do I have that here? Oh, oh sorry. Your Worship, there's one yes, more. Yes, yeah. I, I got that. Okay. From Carol. Thanks, Carol. Okay, uh, email from Northern Lights College dated March 13, 2019, CALP, support letter request. I'll make that recommendation that council authorize a letter of support for Northern Lights College for the Community Adult Literacy Program funding application for 2019-2020. Okay. 
I'll second. Okay. There you go. Okay. Janet, second. All those in favor? Carried. Anything in correspondence that uh, we need to bring out or would carry from uh, C1 to C8 as presented? You make that motion? I'll make that motion that we receive C1 to C8. Rochelle, second. Okay, all those in favor? Carried. Information item. I'll make that motion to receive. I'll second that. All those in favor, any just carry. Nope. Action reports. Community composting. Do we have any information on that? Uh, Okay. It's just for information. Okay. I'll make We're that. Oh. Go ahead. I'll make that no? recommendation that council receive the report for information. I would second that. Okay. Second. We got a second. Any discussion? I'm sorry, I do have something to just okay. say, mention. Yes. Is it possible that we can uh, make sure that when we're doing the trade show this year that we have this information available to the public to, for composting and stuff like that and some of the programs that we have available? Okay, noted. Okay, uh, RA2, Official Committee Planning and Zoning Amendment Bylaws 47, on uh, 47th Avenue Northwest. I'll make that recommendation that the zoning amendment bylaw number 1091 2019 be introduced and given first second reading and that the public hearing be scheduled to obtain public input on the above bylaw on April the 15th at four o'clock. Second. Discussion. I just, I just want a clarification. So this is, um, this is our downtown commercial core because right mm -hmm. now we don't have a zoning for the businesses that are looking to go there. So with this, staff. basically, yep. Good staff. Yes. What happened is uh, somebody was trying to sell a house in this zone, and a purchaser found out that they're actually zoned commercial. So if 75% of the house was destroyed, they couldn't rebuild it. It would have oh, okay. to be commercial. So they have to rezone first. So it, the sale fell through. So the person approached us, and, and that whole little section there is residential, although it's zoned commercial. So we thought we would rezone it to res residential, which it has been used for, for years and years and years. Um, nobody has been approaching those homeowners to ask if they can uh, zone it or, or, or build something commercial there. So uh, behind them is also residential. So it's kind of a housekeeping amendment in a way. It's not, right now they're being, ta they're being taxed for residential, not commercial. So it won't make any difference to them property tax wise if we make this change. It would just make it easier for them to buy and sell there. So this is, I'm sorry, this is 47th That's Avenue right. that we're talking? That it's right by the old medical clinic, just as That's you drive right. up on yeah. the left, oh, on the same okay. side of the street. Yeah, gotcha. So it's zoned town commercial right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more, any more questions? Okay. All those in favor? Carry. <clears throat> RA3 proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 1035 2016 bylaw enforcement. I would make that motion that the zoning amendment bylaw number 1091 2019 be given, uh, introduced and be given first, second, and third readings, and that a public hearing be scheduled to obtain public input on the above bylaw April 15th, 2019 at 4 p.m. Just the first and second reading. 
Oh, did I say first, second, and third, and final? Yes. Okay. <laughs> first okay. and second Correct. reading. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Any questions? Good. Yes. Question. I just, I just have a couple of questions. Um, it, it's going to. It seems to be encompassing alternative health um, methods. And just for example, the, the our doctors and nurses and, and so on are regulated by the College of Physicians and Surgeons under the authority of the provincial government. Who who regulate? Just out of curiosity, uh, who regulates the, the, this industry? Yeah, staff, go ahead. Uh, nobody that we know of. Whenever someone applies for a business license, we always, as a rule of thumb, involve Northern Health. And then if they do need to have any kind of licensing, such as a tattooist or a tattoo artist, um, they do need to be licensed. Uh, but acupuncturists do not. So we always let Northern Health make that call. Thank you. Any more questions? Discussion? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, I guess I'll call question, I guess. Okay, all those in favor? All right. Reports, any new business? Janet, do you have uh, any new business? No, nothing for me. Okay. I just have a question, and I don't know where this falls at in the agenda. Perhaps I should have did this at the beginning. Yep. Would we be best to put new business as the third item on the agenda, as opposed to the end, to ask if there's any new business? Go ahead, uh, staff. It's uh, part of our council procedure bylaw, so we could certainly bring that back to the next meeting if you'd like. Maybe there are other changes that council might want to the agenda that we could look at the same. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Do, do you need a motion for that, or am I just the only yeah, one? Yeah, let's, like let's make one. Okay, I would make that motion then that we bring our uh, procedure bylaw, agenda bylaw, to, for discussion. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any discussion on it? Okay, favor? Gary. Public, any questions from the public? Not seeing any, I... <laughs> go ahead, Leo. <laughs> I'm wearing my uh, radio television hat. Uh, the meeting on the 20th, is it gonna be open to the public? I believe they just wanna meet with the chair and uh, vice chair of the PRRD. And are but you... they will release all the information that and uh, in that meeting, one of the things that uh, Brad uh, Sperling, the chairman of the Peace River Regional, is uh, indicated to uh, me and other, count, other directors was that they want the first meeting to be held here in Chatwin. Wow, that's really good. And who is the meeting with, the ministers or? Yeah, one, I believe there's one there. Okay. I'm, I believe it might be Peter. Might, might be Heyman, or it's one that's coming. I don't have the exact minister's name. Okay, excellent. So it'll be yeah. in Chetwind on the 20th? Nope, it'll be in uh, Dawson Creek, and they'll be vying to bring the first town hall meeting to Chetwind. Oh, okay, town hall meeting. Yeah. So it's in Dawson Creek on the 20th of March? Yes. And Brad and Dan Rose will be representing. Correct. Us. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Not seeing any more questions. I will call the meeting to adjourn. I have a second, favor, carried. Thank you.